Hey, it's Kaylee, and this lesson is about the difference between mass and weight. It is common before lifting something heavy for someone to ask, how much does this weigh? Or say, this dog weighs 50 pounds. But this is actually wrong. When we say something is in pounds, or as a scientist, in kilograms, what we're really saying is how much mass something has. So the correct way to say it would be, my dog has a mass of 50 pounds. And we define mass as how much matter an object has. We can visualize mass as a jar of marbles. The, marble, the more marbles the jar has, the more mass it has. And if some marbles are taken out, it would have less mass. And matter is just really tiny particles that are too small to see. And we're pretending that the smiley faces are tiny particles, and we define weight as the amount of gravitational force an object experiences. And weight still depends on how much mass an object has, but it also depends on where in the universe you are. There is a thing called the acceleration due to gravity. You may have heard of this before. It's probably the world's most famous little g. When we multiply the mass of an object and the acceleration due to gravity, we get the object's weight. But little g is very special. The value changes depending on where you are in space. But don't worry about memorizing what little g is everywhere in the universe. The values have been calculated many times in history and are kept safe in charts that you can always look up. But let's do some examples about weight on Earth and in space. Our first example asks, On Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If you have a mass of 55 kilograms, what is your weight on Earth? Lucky for us, they tell us what little g on Earth is, 9.8 meters per second squared, and they've given us all of our values in SI units, so we can get started. First, we write down our knowns, so little g equals 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth, and the mass is 55 kilograms. So now to find the weight, all we have to do is multiply. So big W is our weight, M is our mass, and little g is the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So we can plug in our numbers. So the weight equals 55 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and we get a weight of 539 newtons. And it makes sense that the units for weight are in newtons because weight is the force of gravity acting on us. Now let's see how much we would weigh on the moon. Our next example says, on the moon, the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. If you have a mass of 55 kilograms, what is your weight on the moon? Now, what do we notice first off? It looks like our mass is the same, so the amount of matter that we have never changes. It's the same on Earth, on the moon, on Jupiter, anywhere in space. But what do we notice about little g on the moon? Little g looks way smaller on the moon than on Earth. All right, so now we can go ahead and get started. Since we have all of our units uh, in SI, we're ready to go. So we can write down what we know. Little g on the moon is 1.6 meters per second squared. Our mass is still 55 kilograms. And we know we just need to multiply our mass times little g to get our weight. So you go ahead and plug those in. We get weight equals 55 kilograms times 1.6 meters per second squared. And we get 82.5 newtons. So our weight on the moon is 82.5 newtons. And that's way less than the gravitational force that we feel on Earth. 
So these are the things to remember. Our mass is the amount of matter that we have or any object has, and it doesn't change. If you're on Earth, if you're on the moon, if you're floating in space, you always have the same amount of mass. But your weight can change a lot, and that's because the acceleration due to gravity is different all over space. So nice work. Keep following along with these videos and make sure you play the game to, to learn even more. And remember, always be clever. Hey, hey.